Hey, it's Chris. Let's do this, baby. Biggest box I've ever opened, probably, period, right? And you came here actually for what? This one, actually. No, just kidding. We'll talk about Woodland Wizards later from Wormgold. Whole separate video. We're talking Primal! Primal the Awakening. What do you need to know? Everything that's out there. Ramble, rant, rave, unboxing, hopefully no regrets. And we already have a wee little playmat. Let's do this. So this is a friggin' big box. You can barely see me over it. Let's turn this very gently upside down so you can see the back here for a second. Awesome, tremendous artwork. Reggie Games, one to four players, 30 minutes per player. Nature on Thyria has always been indomitable and ferocious. Since their arrival, mankind has taken refuge behind the walls of the fortified city. No longer will they suffer that injustice. Hunters, travel, resource, answers, secrets. Let's go. So this thing is massive. Like, I'm scared. I can feel and hear things just, like, shifting around as I'm doing this. Tommaso, Alberto, um, this is just one of the most massive undertakings, folks, that I've ever seen. This is just a massive, massive mother of a box. I have a Diet Coke sitting here, too. I gotta be careful not to, like, you know, knock that thing over as well. We'll get that out of the way. The knife is already... Oh, my good gracious! I was not expecting the miniatures to be right on top. Holy crap. Yeah, that's right. You're not even going to see my reaction because you're looking at these beauties, right? And oh my. Now, if only they came pre-painted and I could afford that, or only if I knew somebody that painted or did that, like these would be freaking amazing. Like, I'm not even sure I can do this. It's not standing up. I'm going to have to like stand up to get this very gently off. They've got little finger holes on the sides here, as you can see, that I am very, very gently trying to... Oh, good gracious. This thing is like the whole... Holy crap. This is so much bigger than I was expecting. Okay. At the same time, it's not. But this, you know, I guess there's so many, there's so many miniatures in here. It's like literally two-thirds the box depth. You can't tell the depth perception there. But if I give you a little bit of... I can't even pick this up with one hand. It's still so heavy. Like, that's what you're dealing with there. So, you know, I don't even know what I do with these miniatures. Let's put them aside for a second here as I bump the mic and you get a whole bunch of cling clang krang. We'll, we'll go back to those, although that's going to be very delicately balanced there. Again, another huge miniature thing along the side here. Holy cow. I just hope with these, as detailed and unique as they look from an overall perspective... Again, like, I just hope, mechanically speaking, they're as awesome as they are different, unique from that aspect. So, again, we'll set this to the other side. I'll either remember it's there, and I'll show you later, or I'll trip on it when I stand to you know, make some changes here. But this is the board, I'm assuming, that of the playmat I just alluded to. It's got some tape on it, actually, to keep it in place. So, we'll gently remove that tape, as we're seeing here. You can see it's in about four different places. So, tape, 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 tape. Um, yeah, I mean, again, let's, we'll, we'll get out the board first, and then we'll actually talk playmat here. I just did circular tape all over my fingers here, so, um, ooh, it says on the side, and then the dragon will come, and the dormant monsters will answer its call. Okay, okay, they're going lore heavy. I don't mind that, you know, give me the gameplay, but, you know, lore heavy. Oh, what, what are we still doing here? I'm still taped down in, like, three places here. Arrgh. Okay, so gently... So gently trying to remove this here. Again, I might just get the knife out because that might be easier, but I don't really want to damage stuff, right? You don't want to see me struggle. That thing is taped in like a beast. Uh -huh. See what I did there? Yeah, it's taped twice on this side too. So they really taped this super strong because it's taped to the plastic wrap. So this is the board that I was just talking about with the wrap there. Uh, with, that was the board with the play mat, but here are the player cards. So here's your basic setup, and here's all your characters. So let's let's get the knife out here. Let's put uh, Woodland Wizards aside a second, get it out of the way, and let's see if, you know, I, these tight wrappings, right? Like, are you like me? Like, where you're like, I feel like I'm going to scratch these or rip these apart. So, you know, they're, just, they're so tightly wrapped around here, you can barely get the knife in uh, to go in the first place. So I don't even know where I'm going to go with this, because there's no wrinkle edge up. I mean, you can always run the knife on the side, of like the actual like board, it, the cardboard itself here. But that's the problem, right? No one wants their top sheet to be all scr scratched up and look all, you know, like that. Cause 
I've done that before, right? Have you done that before? Because like sometimes these are wrapped so tight, that's the literal only way to get some of these done. So, you know, we'll move this aside just a second out of camera shot here, just so you can still kind of see, I'm assuming that's the rule book. And then you've got the hunters here. So we'll push those aside. So you've just got your hunters, great sword, great bow, hammer, sword and shield. Again, like I hope these are all like distinctly, whoa, that's cool. Like if I could have miniatures that looked like that, right? You'd be pumped. Oh, different amount of health or token spots up here, weaknesses, Digorax. Okay, okay. It's like a scaled dragon, sort of super armored, Triceratops featured thing. Korowan. Okay, that's the crab dude we saw in the big box. Ooh, I can't pronounce that. I'm not going to try and embarrass myself on my own channel like I always do. That's freaking cool. It's like Fenrir with crystals on its head. Um, Morcross. Okay. Oz. Ozwu. Ozu? Ozu. We'll go with that. I don't know. What else we got going on here? We got all the we got all the stuff, guys. We got all of them. Haram. Oh, that's like a ice freaking dragon worm, if you will. Taragua. Uh, that one looks like slightly different. Which one of these is not like the other? Right, that one. Oh, the awaken. That's what they're talking about on the side of the box, right? Oh, that one's that one's so big. That one's so big. It has two cards. Oh, that's that's end game boss material written all over it, right? Who? Okay. So we'll set that aside on the playboard. We'll get the knife out of the way so I don't stab myself in the middle of the video, right? What happened to Liege? Well, he bled out during his Awakening Primal uh, video, right? Okay, tabs. I'm assuming these are like tabs to divide the cards up. And then you have, oh, good gracious. Look at this rule book. Okay, this rule book doesn't look like much, right? When you overhead view. And then you turn it sideways and you realize that's how thick it is because, again, it's like thicker than the playboard. Um, that's a bad sign. Actually, you know what? I take that back. That's not a bad sign. You know, because I bet one of these is the scenario book in here too. And it's just a sign of hopefully, hopefully, as the thing sticks to the knife there, again, like if you saw my other unboxing video or if that one has aired before this one, uh, where I had this little piece of plastic just continually stuck to my hand for like 20 minutes of the video. And I just said, screw it at some point. Stuff the plastic in the pocket there and the rule book and the campaign book. So actually the campaign book here is thicker than the rule book. So let's take a look at the rule book here. And this is like super high quality, folks. Um, they did not spare expense on even the production of this. Look at that. I mean, you don't need pictures of, you know, the dragons in the rule book. This is, I mean, this is solid solo mode. Okay, solo mode, hunter size is two. That's the other thing I'm gonna really like about this game, I think, is a lot of these other big dungeon crawl, battle monster, whatever it may be, right, falls under that category are you need four to play. That's my biggest criticism of Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Love that freaking game, right? But I, I don't always wanna play with four. So that's the cool thing. Action cards, mastery cards, equipment cards. This is the game that people wanted Monster Hunter to be. You know, nothing against Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is like a light version of this. Combat board, oh man, I, that's what that is. That's the playmat combat board. Holy frick, I am super excited about that because that's my one big um, deluxification justification that I have nowadays that I feel really good about. They talk to you through the monsters and the Varaxian components, and you know, you see the behavior cards, the stance cards, the peril cards, the starter board, the starters over here for you. Um, yeah, I mean, setup instructions. I mean, this seems really clear, and I really like this. If you know, I, I comment and criticize all the time on crowdfunding nowadays with all these 40 page rule books. Let's just skip to the end, right? This is 100 pages, 100 pages, 100 pages, 100 pages. But look at this. This is an index at the end here of pages upon pages and pages. So you don't need to wonder what it's referring to. Now, hopefully they're all well defined within the actual book itself. But this just seems super detailed. And as much as I criticize some of the other stuff, if you put out a super well put out rule book in terms of how to play this, this looks like a rule book that you would read as someone who never played this game, never had any hands on. I know you guys are you know laughing in the comment section right now, but you know what I mean, right? There's plenty of games that you've played that you go, it feels like the designers are the only ones that have played this based on how I'm reading the rule book because they already knew how to play and it was already internalized. So they didn't actually explain things well in the rule book. And you know what I'm talking about because I am also a firm believer. God, this looks awesome. Deck lists for hunters. Um, I, I, you know, this just looks, I mean, this is just production top notch. Setups for expeditions. If you want to do like, uh, this is like the one offs, I think, or even the two offs. You can fight bosses two times, it appears. Um, expedition rules. So um, this is the standalone experience. And that's also awesome because you don't have to do the campaign. You just want to do a one-off, set up some decks, go and play. 
that's you know the big appeal for star wars unlimited right now for me is why i'm potentially buying more is not because i want to speculate on it make some money but the cool artwork as well as just having a bunch of decks that i can just take out one of four or five decks that are fully well suited that are slightly meta-esque and just play and pick and there you go game expansions here oh oh we'll get there if this video isn't long enough already uh quest rewards i mean this is like monster hunter meets kdm meets townsfolk tussle campaign set up there i'm not always a big fan of the campaign sheets but they are necessary like i just commented on another unboxing video that i was doing uh, of multiple games going over them of saying you know like when you have like smaller box filler games of like under an hour and a half play time how many times do you guys actually use those uh filled sheets for scoring purposes preparing potions upgrading the forge holy components batman campaign rules i mean so this is actually just incredibly thorough i'm really impressed by that actually as a rule book and i'm probably going to be doing some light reading later tonight or this weekend um again little quote there at the beginning and then this is just your maps campaign chapters quest scenarios quest rewards um giving you a little lore tells you what you do here on the side unlock quest one and two each player upgrades a card pool feather expansion unlock that so if you have additional expansion content you get unlocked other things. Ooh, that's interesting. That's an interesting dynamic because I could see how you would like that if you can got the all in like I do. Or if you don't have the all in, you're gonna be missing stuff out here. And would you be able to feel like you would could go back and incorporate that rather easily, like retrospectively, you know, introduce it or include it? Or would you not? And again, like this is plenty of narrative, but I'll be honest, I'm not one of those people that reads a ton of this narrative either. I I'm not. I, I want the setup, I want the how do we do this? and going how many chapters do we have here let's see well, we skipped over a bunch so quest these are the chapters uh so what is it 12 12 i think the awakened right there um lore questions if you go oh lore questions so if you get those lore questions right that's the first time i've ever seen that if you read the lore and remember it they're going to actually give you bonus rewards here uh based on remembering that so that's spoilers actually but 12 chapters it appears including the awakened quest scenarios that you can go through as well again setups who they're going with terrain that's going to be on this setup and i love this right you're going to laugh at this or people are going to poo poo this right but there's something to be said of okay i grab a couple of these and i set them in a big circle and that's it you don't need like six other map components or 10 other pieces of tokens that are going everywhere it's just there and is it going to give you the dynamic experience though that's going to be the other aspect is can you get the max experience with the min amount of stuff not min but you know what i'm saying minimum comparatively so again this is tons of other stuff dragon with a thousand faces i mean we're already at 15 here 17 i mean so 12 of those but then you've got all i'm assuming this is all for the expansion stuff too 30 30 30 30 30 folks that's insane reward section uh unlocks there if you go there and you can see all that stuff expirations rebirth i don't know what that's going to be that's all spoilers probably as well so those are the books i'm this is this is top notch folks this is top notch um this is sort of your kdm style of things with the forges the herbalists the potions where you're going in between and you're being able to you know smelt things forge things and just mix and so you've got a thick pack of these here and through unboxing magic we'll actually skip over the part where i laboriously get the plastic off and so herbalist herbalist uh different levels so is this double-sided though herbalist level one both sides okay that's the same that's kind of weird i don't know why that anyway uh so level threes and then you got fire forge horn forge coral forge so basically corresponding to the different types of the monsters here metal forge fire forge again level twos of everything level threes of everything so okay that's cool uh we've got the campaign tracker here um that i was mentioning here uh plenty of this two different pages and uh, that's a lot of stuff to track that's going to be my biggest bane uh no no joke that's going to be the biggest thing i have problems with and then you're going to be putting these on standees i think these little tokens and this is not a lot of tokens this is not very many at all um all things considered if this is all that's with the base game as a whole right now because now i don't care about scratching this up the side of this right because i mean it's cardboard and i'm going to get rid of it either way so don't care about that aspect of things but you got little tokens here well again plastic goes in the pocket that pocket's bursting and falling out of the seams uh just tokens just straightforward terrain tokens mostly and then status effects damage effects and everything else that you'd expect to go along with it there so maybe i'll do this afterwards you don't watch punching like punching's boring uh you didn't you didn't tune in for that that doesn't go in there stay out of there 
getting excited, a little overexcited there. Uh, we'll put that back in the box, but now we're gonna go to the cool stuff, the really cool stuff, right? The cards, and we're going to that driven gameplay content because you've got the huge massive cards of like your decks and your upgrades of the great sword here. And then you've got the small wee little tiny decks of cards, like your memories and your quests and things like that. Again, camera magic here, so you don't have to watch the plastic unwrapping, saving you a minute or two of your time. And these are just giving you basically descriptions of what you're going to be doing and just little quest cards here that you're going to be going through. So, um, yeah, okay. And then, again, these are the little action modifiers, I think. So, yeah, okay. Not as interesting, that pile, but here's the big one. This is why you came right with the miniatures. Again, oh, man, this is just cool. This is just cool. Like, I hope that they are as functionally different. Um, it looks like, okay, well, so you've got, you increase damage by two and remove a struggle. Suffer one damage if you do increase the damage by three. If you suffer two damage, increase it by four. So, I mean, you know, not as different as I may like. Suffer three damage, get plus six. Health comes critical, search your discard for that and add it to your hand. So that's the question, right? Like with some of this stuff, if you've got upgradable stuff here, how different is this stuff? Are you going to actually want to upgrade some of these cards or not? Is it going to be worthwhile? Increase your hand size, increase your hand size, healing. Um, you know, again, these are all swords and blades. So... Shimmer Blade, reveal three of those and reduce the stamina cost. I mean, this is just combo-licious, right? Uh, different swords here. These are all blades so far. Oh, here you're getting into the bows. So you basically have the option, like if you're that great sword guy that I showed you at the beginning, which one of these are you manipulating? Which one of these are you using depending on which monster you're facing? And they all have the same back there, as you can see. And then again, similarly with the bow. Hopefully, again, the, like if you give me a fire bow, right, it's different than the other. And it is. Discard from your hand, deal two damage. So different aspects. It's not just like a reskin of the item. That, that'd be kind of off-putting, right? If you had like all the ice things do the same thing and they're just mechanically the same, but it's different aesthetic on the card, that would be disappointing. Um, I would not like that nearly as much. Uh, so here you go. Here's the bows. And they're very clearly marked. There's no question about this. Hammer, again, the aesthetic. Wouldn't mind a little bit of a different shape on some of these more so, but who cares, right? I'm being nitpicky more than anything else. Again, raw stone hammer. Ooh, hammer, sh uh, hammer shield. Sword shield. Okay, that's kind of cool. The thing looks like it's going to eat you. Um, not as impressed with the shields. I'm just not a shield guy myself. And then ancient hammers down here. Ancient shields. Celestial, 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 whatever that is. Round structure. So you're getting to the cards that are actually telling you how to play here as a whole. So again, very straightforward. Monster, player, end. So, player references, if you want to individualize them as well. So, I mean, that's the cool stuff, right? That's the stuff that you've been waiting to see. That's the stuff that you want to see. Mechanically speaking, how does that compare overall? And what does it do? Uh, piece of tape still sitting here. You need to get rid of that thing because, you know, otherwise I'm going to, like, get a card stuck on that. And nobody wants cards that are, like, half ripped by tape, right? So that would suck as well. So what else is in the core box here? There's not much else in here. But, we, again, we got a taped down situation here. So we'll get rid of this tape on either end of this. And, again, it's, like, completely, you know what, screw it. And grab the whole thing here and just take off the tape this way so that we can... This is slightly annoying, but I also know why it's done, because you don't want those miniatures getting smushed by this stuff inadvertently, like, falling out as well. So I, I see why they did it, but this tape is, like, super sticky tape. Like, ugh. Like, okay. So then dividers. Dividers for all that card and your storage of what customizable situations you have available to you. Some baggies for the tokens here. Do not open box. You want me to open this on camera? I think I'll until instruct you. I won't. Just kidding. And then you have all your other item cards here. So on those player cards that we were looking at earlier, right? At the very beginning, at the very beginning, if I can find out where I actually threw them at this point. So those player cards I was talking about at the very beginning, the slots here, if I can actually turn this right side up, right? Your your sword card that you're utilizing, and then you have your, sh your helm and your shield, and then other options, including like potions and whatever that is down there. I don't know what that symbol is, but here's your gear. Here's your gear essentially, right? There's the symbol you just saw at the bottom. And that's maybe just your accessories, actually, not your potion slots. So your base armor, and then I'm assuming, yep, here's that symbol. So you can start to see uh, more of the base armor there. And then we have uh, the helms and potions. And at this point, you're probably going, Chris, you can't just tease that equipment. Yeah, I opened it. So here you go again, right? Um, just going to be modifying it. Health is critical, draw, suffer damage, health is critical, or draw. So again, like I want to see differences between all of these, especially with the upgraded levels. 
Um, so I'm hoping that it doesn't like become minutia and this is actually like meaningful swapping in swapping out, but they're also not like super hard to get. Like that's the problem with KDM, right? As KDM as a whole is that some of those are just impossible to get because you have to like meta meta farm. And I'm not one of those meta meta farmers, right? Like I don't want to play the game four times through to learn which ones I have to farm and which ones I don't. So different potions that you can just be brewing here from the herbalist and almost all potions here, getting to the best stuff down here at the bottom. When you play your first blank in sequence, remove a struggle. Um, so again, some shield content there at the back. And you know what? Let's see if we can stuff all those in that one. Ooh, that one fit just nicely uh, because I didn't open one of these. So we'll leave one of those closed right now. But here's some more of your electric whip. What? Okay. Electric dagger. Okay. Some other accoutrements, if you will. And then some more armor there. Some more potions. So a little bit of everything else there as well. And then we have a, a couple other piles here of cards. As you can see, they're located right below here. And I'm not sure what exactly these are in addition. Just more stuff. Oh, these are the enemy stuff. These are all the enemies. So like this one, Monster Stomp. Each player suffers two unless they discard a green card from their hand. If all players discard a green, remove uh, Struggle. Okay. So you just have a whole lot of this stuff, right? Look at this. Oh, and there's your where it's going, how it's attacking. Uh, resistant Stance 2. It's going to attack in those three areas. When revealed, place a fire train in the front sector. Suffer burning in that area. And then here we go. We got one more uh, package of here. Oh, that's a scraping sound. Again, this is going to be a little bit of your cards, it looks like here, depending on what weapon count you're utilizing. And then more enemy AIs, again, that you can kind of see going along there. So, um, you know what? I'm, I'm actually <laughs> surprisingly hyped for this one. You know, with some of the other unboxings, I've had um, regrets, truth be told. And I have not felt as good about them. If you watched my one from ISS Vanguard, or if you watched the one with Mythic Battles Pantheon, uh, Ragnarok, actually... I just kind of was like, oh, crud. And this one is evoking the opposite feeling, sort of like the unboxing of Star Wars Unlimited. Like during it, I was kind of like just going down, not getting good stuff. But afterwards, I felt actually OK. And so now I'm really kind of more excited. You want to see more content? Let's go. Let's just go back to these guys for a second, because these things are just massive. Um, and it's just an absolutely huge, huge treasure trove of miniatures here. But the annoying as this thing is, it's actually taped in there really, really well. I mean, look at that freaking dragon right there, right? And you know what? I'm not even going to take this out because I don't want to risk breaking these right now because this awakened dude right here, um, this awakened dude, and I don't think you can see how impressively massive his is. You know, look at, look at how big this base is. Look at how big that base is comparatively to all the others. He's just so much bigger and so much sturdier. I mean, look at, look at this right now. That is just freaking massive, all of these guys. This is table presence. Is it needed? No, absolutely not. Standees. This is the Amerithrash equivalency right now of Foundations of Rome. So if you have Foundations of Rome and you're criticizing me, well, fair enough. Um, but you know what? Maybe someday they'll make a Foundations of Metropolis Primal of the Awakening, if you know what I mean. I can't just tease you here. So I've got out one of the other boxes, the smaller one, more easily manageable, less tape and less overhead. So here's like the lizard worm, dude. Just look at the amount of detail on this guy. Freaking awesome. It's freaking awesome. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. And again, like I don't I don't have a problem with these being taped. And these are actually super heavy. They're solid. I'm not a big fan of Crustacean Dude in general. Like, Crustacean Dude just fantasy-wise doesn't do anything for me. But again, he's freaking cool. And I, I mentioned here you got like ice crystal fenrir. Um, or sorry, rainbow crystal fenrir. Again, like the detail on these isn't as good, you know, in the picture, it's much sharper. But if you make those much thinner, again, it's gonna break. So I understand why they didn't do it. Again, these bases are huge, folks. Um, let me be very clear about that. And so I I know why they tape this, because if you don't tape this, uh, these guys are going to fall out, and the sensitive parts are just going to get broken. And so I have no qualms with them doing what they did. Again, like his tails. They've taken high, high care not to make um, you have broken miniatures. So um, I really appreciate that as a whole. Like, if I could paint one of these, like, I'd put a couple of these behind me. Probably that big freaking Awakened Dragon. Like, that's the one I'd put behind me, so... There you go, core box. Got a little bit of a crease here. You can hear this wrinkling on the top. Didn't like fully get laid on, heated on there. So it's kind of weird, but that's a minor tacky thing. Who cares? So a couple other odds and ends here. Obviously we have the playmat. Again, this is freaking awesome. I really like this playmat. I'm a big fan of playmats. Double-sided there, looks awesome. Don't even have to take out a shrink wrap. You can kind of see that it looks freaking sweet. Then we'll go over to the Tomb of Creatures, which is your little book. So, again, just awesome artwork, giving you more of the lore. 
And again, this is freaking awesome artwork. I like it. I like it. It's cool. I'm going to show my kids this and my kids are going to be all over this stuff. So you got a little lore, you got a little picture to go along with it. So yeah, kind of like a journal where uh, someone's been studying these things and you get to read all about them. Uh, sculpture design here back in the back. And then just everything that would go along with each of these creatures, right? Like here's the whole fire set. Here's the whole horn set. Just kind of encapsulating everything we just saw in the core box, you know, in a nutshell. So Ooh, Awakening Heroes. Again, just more core. I, I like this. This is these are, these are actually really cool. I actually almost like the Hunters there more. Okay, so then we have this big old thing in front of me. You can kind of see, right? So this is the sleeves box. This is the sleeves box. This is a massive box, actually. I don't think you can realize how big this one is. So that's it. It's a whole heck of a lot of sleeves. So the question is, if I can store all of the cards in here separately, you know, that's relatively significant. The only question is, how well am I going to sleep? Sleeping takes a long time. Sleeping takes a long time. Sleeping takes a long time. This is actually a really cool box, though. This is much bigger than a sleeve box I ever expected, though, at the same time. That wasn't enough for you. Here is all the other stuff, right? All the other expansions. Monster. Monster terrain. Monster. That's a nightmare right there. Nightmare. Kind of cool. Venom. As you can see, I'm building up around me here. Ice expansion and Mount Havoc expansion. You ready? So we'll start here with these two. We have the terrain box and we have the feather expansion. So let's take a look at the terrain box and you can kind of see just generic stuff here. Brush, rock, plateau. These are the tokens that I was mentioning going through the rule book earlier. So you're basically just giving a 3D component to that. And you know, that's probably the thing I'm least concerned about when it comes to this game is that whole, because again, I think that's gonna potentially increase the setup teardown time. It's because I kind of like the idea of just having little tokens. Now, it's not going to be as thematic, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to, like, actually, you know, utilize them. You know, because it'd be kind of another thing, as we saw with a couple other games more recently, where you can actually hop onto the terrain. This is actually super hard to open, actually. Oh, it's stuck. Okay, so, yeah, that's really tough coming out. But here you go. You can kind of see now. Uh, oh, actually, you can. You can stand on those. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Again, just some terrain, some bushes, and, yeah, so... Uh, this is probably the biggest one that you could probably keep or not as a whole. If you were a painter, though, I mean, this would actually be the one thematically incorporated. That would probably be the most bang for your buck if you're a painter. Nah, well, yeah, no, I, I say that because, I mean, otherwise the expansions are all going to give you more expansion stuff, right? So hopefully this top is a little easier to get off. Oh, yeah, it's much easier. So that one just slid right off. The other one, uh, terrain one there, for whatever reason, wouldn't do that. So feather expansion, expansion overview, new category of monsters. Includes all of the components associated, six new quests, expand the campaign. So this reminds me very much of like Kingdom Death, right? Two new monsters can be used in the campaign mode, explore a new region, expedition mode as well. Uh, obviously you need the base game. You have the Pazis, I'm assuming I'm mispronouncing these correctly. Uh, then Nagar Haas. All right, that's right. I said mispronouncing them correctly. Campaign mode, new rules. You've got Jungle Brush, Paralyzing Spores, Evasion, and Quick Refresh. Trait card that has, uh, well, abilities to, well, deal with evasion. So, again, Expedition 1, Expedition 2, Expedition 1, Expedition 2. Special rules for each of these as well. Again, super colorful. And then that's that's it. So I'm imagining that most of these expansions are going to be very similar. And you got the campaign book to actually go along with it. So uh, quest scenarios. So they actually lay it out for you explicitly here. Uh, give you a little bit more details if you manage to win as well what happens and what what you know you get lore wise in addition so um you're getting up to 40 here now we're up to 40 different things there and so clearly i didn't do these in order but here's the rewards and the expiration of what happens because this is also one of those things where i think in this game that you have the ability to sort of not do quests and have them expire so feather forge level one there as well and the level two and level three and then you start to see a little bit of the other box content here Again, very colorful. It looks like the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park with, like, rainbow coloration. So, it's kind of cool. And then, oh, more cards here. Again, this is the this is the kicker. This is the kicker you want to see more of. And the model. The model itself is way down there. Again, like, these are beautifully packaged, but they're a little harder to get out as a whole. Because, is this one taped as well? Let's see. Tapage? No, no tapage. So, we'll just take this one out for you. I'm No, it is tapage! Ah! My arch nemesis tape. All the other core box ones, I ripped the tape off. This one, I just said, screw it. I got to have 
uh, the knife cut off here. And they actually put a little divider there so you can not have that tail get broken. So they really did a careful job with all of these to make sure um, nothing happened to them. So I'm not even going to try and take this one out, but you can kind of see right there as a whole. These are different. I like these sculpts are different than the ones in the core. And so they give a little bit different aesthetic. And hopefully, again, a little bit of different gameplay, actually mechanical difference in addition to all the other stuff that's going along with it. So uh, the trickiest part right now so far today has been uh, just trying to get all this stuff back in the box. Come to the back of the box. Anyway, you remember that Adam Sandler uh, CD? You know, you ever hear that one? Again, that shows you how old I am. That was one of like the first CDs that I ever listened to on like the bus with a friend. Come to the back of the boat. Anyway, I shouldn't be talking about that sort of thing here now uh, because you're not interested in that. So let's see what else we got. So I just rearranged the order on these last four because I want to save the best two for last, but Venom and Ice. Well, and you know, let's be clear. I'm just basing that off of what I think is with the names more than anything else. So uh, let's do Venom. Let's do Venom. We'll put Ice to the side over here and we'll put Venom out in front of the camera here. Again, that's cool looking. Spider thing. I don't like spiders. <laughs> I don't like spiders whatsoever. So again, let's see, slowly getting this thing off. Yeah, spiders have always creeped me the heck out, right? Like, again, just like I said in another video, like everybody's got a bodily fluid they don't like. Everybody's got an insect or a creature. Ooh, that Hydar monster seems really freaking sweet. Like, look at that thing, that's awesome. The spider thing though, eh, and snake thing. Okay, not quite as cool for me. Uh, campaign, new forge, and relates to Venom. That's cool. I literally like, cause Venom seems to be different. Uh, campaign setup, scenario setup, quest setup here. Uh, the Venomous Serpents is a new type of card as well. Thornvine tokens and Venom cards in general. Uh, it adds Venom to your deck. Card instructs you to add a Venom to your discard pile. So it's basically going to be similar to wounds. It clogs up your deck and they actually accumulate in your hand and you have to generate stamina, suffer damage. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Again, like, is it different enough? And are some of these things things that you're going to want to include every time and again i guess it's not really spider it's just a really kind of weird looking snake with all those like holes in the front right there that's creepy that's creepy man i, I don't care who you are that's creepy that's creepy i don't want to show that on camera for too long i'm gonna scare you guys away uh and, and so then then you're obviously having the campaign book here just very similar to all of these they all have their little thing here uh symbol of ouroboros it's the snake eating its own tail if you're not familiar with that one so again, you got your quests, uh, Expedition 1, Expedition 2, Quest Rewards, Moonflower, and then the rewards and the updates and the experience there. So again, very, very similar. You have the Venom Forge here as well, levels 1, 2, and 3. Kind of cool there. The Dragon Bane. Again, a little one of everything, essentially, with these expansion ones. So whatever class you are, whatever uh, accessory you want, it gives you that. And then obviously just the creature cards here. And then a few more tokens, terrain tokens, items, and the models themselves. So for the sake of brevity, that's a big freaking snake. Um, looks like a very interesting you know, sculpts. I'm creeped out by that. We're not going to spend too much time on this one, folks. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get myself in trouble or get myself scared. And you know what? I don't need that. You don't need that on camera. This thing's already going way too long as it is. If you made it this far and we still have three expansion boxes left, you are a diehard, folks. I'm going to stack these up on this side. So then we're going to go over here to ice and we're going to see what ice has in store for us as a whole. So slowly slide the box lid off here with my eyes closed i can see the sky and constellations hiding behind the clowns beyond the clouds there <laughs> behind the clowns that's what you get on a leisure games video ice expansion again just offering more ice stuff i'd say and each of these has two bosses so again i hope the bosses are dramatically different enough even within the same elements because that's going to be a make it or break it for this game as a whole uh new keywords again three new keywords that you're adding i, I hope it's not too much there glaciation track um okay so you're gonna get iced over if you go too long essentially or these bosses are gonna manipulate the ice in some way shape or form that's what it kind of looks like again very similar here same map different area of the map quest scenarios kind of freaky looking ice creature there oh that's creepy too right like in case you weren't wondering about other stuff that's kind of okay <laughs> uh tomb of ice so stargate stargate anyway that's a whole nother conversation too stars stars oh tree look at that nice tree and then rewards back here again like hopefully the rewards are different enough as well when you're doing these so that it's not just very very similar different shades of gray that'd be my only again biggest concern here you got your creature there and your creature there your generic stuff here uh oh oh we got we got a token here okay 
So maybe I should just punch those tokens out. I probably should. More stuff there. Creatures there. Okay, so all these expansions are looking like they got sort of the same formula at least going on. So in case I don't open them all, just kidding, I'm going to open them all for you. Uh, you'll know what you're missing too from that aspect. But it makes you wonder then if some of this stuff is going to be more of your preferred or if it's going to be dramatically different with, you know, sort of like the Marvel United, if you will, if nothing else. So then we have the Nightmare expansion here. And then we have Mount Havoc. Mount Havoc is the more interesting, like, okay, it's got a hunter on the box. So what do we got there? And then, I mean, you know, this says Nightmare Expansion. And Nightmare Expansion, right? Like, you want to know what's different about the Nightmare Expansion. That thing's like, thing looks like a furry T-Rex, right? Not just me. My kids would love that, dig that furry T-Rex thing. So, um, okay, what do we got going on here new in this expansion? And this expansion has three new monsters. Ooh, three new monsters. Three monsters as a whole. And again, you need the base game, but this book is already a little bit thicker already. Zekoth Variants. So like the sword, Pokemon Sword and Shield, they've got a variant here of each of these different types of monsters. Uh, bleeding Cards, Lava Diagram, and Primordial Blood down here. Different campaign reward cards for crafting, as well as behavior cards, as well as, again, just like the Venom one, putting in a bleeding card into your deck to kind of mess up your flow and your rhythm. So Nightmare Variant Rule. So it's going to give you a whole different optional variant to increase the difficulty beyond the base game challenges. And so it says all of these monsters right here, you can actually give them, uh, well, different ways of playing them through. Use the Nightmare Variant stance cards included in the expansion here. Um, and it's aggression level in red so you can use a level one a level two or a level three so in case this game isn't hard enough i mean this is probably the one essential expansion if you're looking for it from that side of things hunter's trial of nightmares here uh trial variant as well so if you complete scenario get valor points extra extra valor points higher scores overall and then just again campaign expansion from that aspect so gives you the two and then the third different one there, as well as, ooh, that guy too. So three monsters, one of them with two variants. So really, again, I would argue right now that easily this is the expansion to get. Like I was just saying, I didn't actually plan it that way. So campaign here again, quest scenarios. Again, very similar setup, very similar Breath of the Dragon. Um, and so Mouth of the Volcano, cool stuff, cool stuff. This one is by far and away the winner so far, uh, if you had to get one expansion right now. Because the other ones look shade similarly, but this one is by far and away kind of the coolest here. Especially if these variants are actually significantly different. Again, you got your uh, feathered uh, T-Rex there. Allosaurus, whatever you want to call it. And again, we'll take we'll take these guys out, right? We'll take these guys out so you can actually see these guys. Again, tape. Whoa, these aren't taped. Whoa, what happened? Okay, it's only taped on one side. Craziness. Well, they almost fell out anyway, so we'll pull them out. So, okay, this guy, that's one of your variant dudes. You must be able to use him for both. Here's your feathery T-Rex, dude. Can't really tell he's feathered with the model. He's still freaking cool looking T-Rex. Better than the Jurassic Legacy ones. And then, ow, ow. This guy's really sharp, actually. I just like, okay. He's like Ankylosaurus meets uh, Spiked Spiny uh, Snapping Turtle. So he's freaking cool looking too. But wow, he was uh, pokey to get out there. He kind of hurt me a little bit. So glad he's back in here with some camera magic. Again, this expansion clearly is so far and away the head and shoulders winner if you had to choose one. Now, do you have to choose one, though, or did you go all in like I did? So we'll see, and we'll get the box top for this one, and then we will go to the, well, Mount Havoc, which, may, again, may be actually the second one. So I may have just done this in uh, reverse order, and I just thought these were the coolest-looking ones and potentially the most unique comparatively, and I may or may not be right by this aspect. I am falling into inky obscurity that unites everything and devours everything. It's, there's quotes on the side of the inside of the box here. So that's what you're getting here, essentially. So what do we got going on here? So we have two new hunters. Ooh, is this this is really like minigun hunter? Like minigun with arrows, essentially, right? Uh, so Mount Havoc campaign, a new game mode, Mount Havoc campaign. Uh, <laughs> right? Redundant there. Standalone, short campaign, special rules, middle ground experience between campaign and expedition modes. Three connected scenarios, streamlined sense of progression. So like sort of your mini, do you want to experience it? And do you want to get a full um, experience as well? That this also actually allows you to play with five players. So this is probably second. I would probably still say uh, the other one, and then this one second here. Battle Dance, again, a specific rule. The bullet track, because you have a, a keyword as well as an item that allows bullets. And then just all of the stuff that you can do with the Hunter deck lists. Again, more of the core as well here. So she's the heavy gun, and she is the dual blade. The dual blade, oh, that's freaking sweet, though. 
uh you know she might be one of the ones i start with then because i kind of like the idea of that dual blade or these mini guns these might actually be one of the two that i start with if i have equipment cards uh trackable and usable for the whole rest of the game and the campaign so uh all of a sudden these have shot up now so that's cool i'm really kind of liking this now random encounter phase uh you do not do things uh you know necessarily the same way it's saying right here and then it gives you the little chapters so uh chapter one Chapter two gives you lore each time, epilogue, so then the scenarios themselves. So you're pulling stuff from the other parts of the game, potentially. So that's cool though. Um, it's fine. I really kind of want to try these. I might just like pull these out and try these with the main game instead. Because I feel like this game would be more of a two-handed for me, like playing with two characters at a time. I think that would be manageable, and I don't think it would be overwhelming. So I'd probably go with that. And here's your Fire Forge. Here's your Ice Forge. It looks like these are just upgraded ones to include some of the upgraded weapons from the other situations. So, again, here are the little miniatures. Little me, me, wee little miniature hunters there. You know, you can kind of see. She's, she's got a freaking cool gun there. And then, I mean, and then blades. Like, blades. Okay. Her artwork's pretty freaking sweet. The miniature's pretty tiny. It's kind of hard to get some of those details on those. But I don't think she's going to sit back in there very comfortably, though, as a whole. And then that's it. That's it. So then all the cards go along with these two as well. So that one, I could see myself incorporating again, like I just said, straight up. Straight up, just throw this one right in there. Make this one of the starting options and give it some legs just from the get-go so that it would actually be, um, well, something that you could just go with. Run and go. Run and gun, baby! Because one of the characters has a gun. Anyway, that's all I got. So here at the end, I guess if I had to rank the content that I just went through, uh, the Nightmare expansion is probably gonna be 1A and 1B with the Mount Havoc there. Just because Mount Havoc giving me two more player characters that I'm more interested in from an overall weapon dynamic, but then the Nightmare Mode giving me new ways and difficulties of playing through with a slightly mini campaign along the side that I could play much more straightforward and self-contained. So that's really like 1A and 1B. And then actually, to be fair with you guys, um, you know what, it, it'd probably be the playmat because this playmat's just super, super nice. And so that's probably there. And then it's sort of a mix because those other, what, three expansions are kind of similar skins, Ice and Venom and Feather. So that'd be how I'd be looking at it right now. But I could see one of those other ones sort of, again, Marvel uniting and separating itself just because of how the dynamic of you like to play things, right? Like with any of the asymmetric faction games, you have games uh, or characters within them or components within them like root or mythic mischief where you just find one that vibes more with you and so i can see one of those three as well elevating itself depending on how that goes too so uh, i'm going to finish packing this up i'm going to find a place to store all this stuff which is going to be the big issue and then um to the table soon so if you like that if you want to know more information if you want me to hear me ramble more i'm doing this more just because it's fun and you know what you don't tune in necessarily for the game you tune in for the dialogue that goes along with it I have uh, another set of games I'll be doing this with shortly in the near future. We're going to maybe go head-to-head, -head, Mage Knight Ultimate Edition, and Euthia. What do you think? As always, I have a Patreon. Help me, help you, get me some subs, and, you know, help me buy some more stuff to talk about in the first place. Have a great freaking day. Thank you for watching, and just thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.